This one fixture determines whether Go Ahead Eagles are in the Champions League or Europa. Sparta Prague were the opponents, and the Czech First League runners-up were absolutely dismantled. Lukas Havlik in the 30th, and Vakali doubling the lead in the 66th, and Sean scoring a pen late on gave a three-goal advantage. That's what their manager deserves for not following the dress code. No chore, you're a clown. The second leg provided more of a challenge, with Sagan bringing one back for them. However, Schaland and Havlik would score once again, securing Champions League football for Krumen. Now, what kind of players would he be able to bring in for this European adventure? Hi, welcome to McDonald's, may I take your order? Yeah, just a loan and a free transfer will do. Miguel Monsalve was loaned from Sporting, and he's there to fill in the attacking mid roles, while the free was an Ajax player. Oh, hey there. Kian Fitzium. Keeps growing. He was signed for homegrown reasons because Krumen barely had any Dutch players left. No one really left, except for Gio on loan to Sparta Rotterdam, where he gets some experience in the Europa League. The excitement of playing in Europe for the first time properly may have been distracting the team. From the first 9 matches, there was a home loss to Vitesse, a 0-0 draw to Twente, another 0-0 draw to Volendam, and a shocking one all draw at home to Nak Brada. A rare bright spot though, was versus Gattuso's Ajax. Sometimes maybe shit. Now, it's Fernando Torres' Ajax, which is random. I'm personally a big fan of El Nino, but as a manager, his previous roles were getting sacked by Cadiz and getting second with Strasbourg in Ligue 2. That resume spoke for itself, as Goose Till and Philip Bungard scored against them in what was a fairly comfortable 2-0 victory. Then, match day nine versus Hirnveen, could have been great. They were starting the campaign well, while a lot of the favorites weren't. Yet, our guy, Paulo Gotzi, headed this 75 seconds in. The Nigerian international has to have a good season, as he's now making 16k a week because of his international cap clause. And then he makes a mistake. Really, bro? It was alright, because our other Nigerian, Makali, had an incredible pass with his weak foot, leading to Goose Till's goal. Unfortunately, Gotzi would be caught out again and see Krasnichi equalize, resulting in a draw. Go ahead, we're 7 points behind here in B, as adapting to a European schedule proved to be challenging. Welcome to the world of the Champions League, where golf states have dominated the competition, the group stage format has been axed for 8 game league format, yet, there were three Dutch clubs here to fix the country's coefficient. I feel like this is karma for bragging about getting an extra European spot those years ago. From September to January, Go Ahead had eight matches to play in the Champions League. So let's go through all of them. Celtic at the Alde Larshorst first, and the Glasgow club have won every Scottish Premiership in this adventure thus far. So, in their debut... Banger! After Banger! Not an ideal start. Leon away followed and there's not much to talk about here. They've never been great in this save, have Will Nancy as coach, and Drew go ahead, nil nil. One point going into the Real Madrid fixture isn't perfect. Even so, with Ancelotti still at the helm, they haven't won a European competition since the first season, although they have every single La Liga title. Despite that, a lot of key pieces have left, Hendrik hasn't really developed, yeah, Marcos Leonardo that. was missing chances. Then, with the game at 52 minutes, a moment came, no go-ahead fan would forget. Camera, no way. <gasps> Mohamed Kamara! Take a picture of that! Go-ahead Eagles 1-0 up on Madrid! They could only respond with wasted chances, as go-ahead Eagles defeated Real Madrid in what has to be one of the most shocking results in the competition's history. If they can do that, imagine what will be done to Benfica. <laughs> Those mistakes, terrible finishing, and a Mitrovic header gave Go Ahead a day to forget. Facing off with the better Prague side, Slavia. What did you say? Before Sparta fans get mad, I'm just stating facts. In the 17th minute, Almasi would get his own rebound to open the scoring. Goose still equalized not long later, but the match remained level until the final 10, as off the bench, Schaland would find the winner. Despite the name, Borussia Dortmund have been anything but the second best team in Germany. They also didn't have the postman Goose Till. His first half strike was cancelled out by Andre Silva, but in the 79th minute, the postman delivered the 3 points. Would 10 points with a minus 2 goal difference be enough to finish in the top 24? I only ask, as Go Ahead had to face Arsenal and Inter in the final 2 matches. Arsenal at the time were first place in the Premier League and had Pep Guardiola as manager. They don't have to be scared, we are neighbors. He had a lot of the players you love or hate. But they were added with Declan Rice, Americ Laporte, Manu Kone, Wilfred Nanto, Richie the Regista, and Diogo Costa, despite Ramsdale still being there. 
They also had this Martin Perez kid, who looks like an outstanding center back. With all that being said, Martinelli completely rinsed the team to find a wide open Jesus. We've mentioned Gustil. However, in December, he would suffer a hip injury that would take him out for three months. That's where Lucas Havlik comes in to take his place. The check delivered against the Gunners, and the references to Pavel Nedved began to look uncanny. Arsenal were going to create more chances, but it was all about staying in the match and leaving the Emirates with a draw. The depth in this side was getting thin, as Fitz Yim and Scott Guest were subbed on. Then, Pep started hearing music that he was once familiar with. Haaland, Haaland, yes, Go Ahead Eagles took the lead at the Emirates and would keep it. Another massive victory, and that would guarantee a Champions League playoff spot with one match remaining. You play into Milan. Internationale. You do like you like do? Uh, I didn't. <laughs> Mauricio Pochettino's Inter was the final opponent. They were doing great in the competition so far, and would also claim the Scudetto. They'd also score in the fourth minute. Better yet, go ahead's Norwegian centre back Germai would get sent off right before half time. With hope basically lost, a few subs were made at the break and later on as the win looked impossible. Inter weren't doing much though, and Sean would earn a penalty just prior to the 90th minute. He'd equalize. But a highlight came from the kickoff. And then, oh, Mansolve finds Sean. No way. <gasps> I don't know how, but Inter were defeated by 10 men go ahead, and the Eagles would finish in eighth place, meaning they advanced to the round of 16. Meanwhile, what happened in the Eredivisie? Nine wins, two draws, and one loss. Those victories included two massive ones over PSV, including a 5-2 thumping that was 5-0 at some stage. There was also a dramatic match versus Almeri City, where at the time, they had zero points and had the score tied at two. However, who else but Shalin to score in the 94th minute? The draws came from AZ. We now have Harry Maguire. He slaughtered home a pen to make it 2-0, but a pair of unlikely sources delivered, as Bruckner and Vinicius Souza made sure a point was earned. The other draw was a scoreless fixture at Vitesse. The sole loss came against Feyenoord right after that Benfica smashing. Moongard scored first, but Rainers equalized, and as I get deja vu typing this, before half time, Tree got a straight red. Feyenoord would find a winner in the second to leave De Aldo Lorschorst with 3 points. So 21 match days through, and Go Ahead Eagles were able to rebuild themselves into second place. Yet, despite Feyenoord's struggles this season, they were back in first by two. It's pretty impressive what they were doing, as they sold a few of their best players. Mario Gila to Madrid for 45 million, and Ibrahim Adel to Liverpool for a whopping 91 million pounds. That saw Luisa Penda arrive from Stuttgart, Benjamin Thorissen Paras of Dortmund, Vinicius Tobias arriving from Shakhtar, and Viktor Shigenkov loaned in. Go ahead would have a similar financial influx, as they would get a new owner. Okay, I was lying about similar as it wasn't a tycoon owner. Yeri Bloom bought the club for 62 million and gave an extra few million for transfers. So two loans came in. Sorry boys, that one's on me. Those loans were Willie Kamwala at center back and Eamon Kari in the midfield. Both will provide depth. Conveniently, Arnor were the next Eredivisie match. Oh, and they loaned in to Ketelerier. Not many clear chances were occurring, but Krumen had a trick up his sleeve. Bring on Schalen in a big game, and Schaland scores. 87th minute, and the man delivered once again, putting Go Ahead Eagles into first. Following that up wouldn't be easy, but it had to be done if the club wanted to win the Dutch Cup, where they would face Fernando Torres' Ajax. That match would begin with some decent chances being missed. However, prior to the break, Edson Alvarez would be a little too clumsy in the box, as Pavlik won the team a penalty. Super Mario Dorgelis tucked it away, and Ajax would be down and out, with Monsalve extending the... Oh, it's an own goal. Regardless, Ajax would make it nervy scoring this pile of trash, but it wouldn't be enough, as... Don't do this, FM. Oh, thanks for that. A deserved win which not only saw Go Ahead face Villain play in the semi-final, but it also saw the sacking of El Nino. Seems a little harsh, but you do you, Ajax. Some easier matches were coming up against Eidenhoven, Kroonigan, Pegswole, and Nakreda. Except, they weren't easy, as three of them were draws. Obviously, Pegzoli was the sole win. Still won't talk about you. Following that, Ajax were up again, this time at the Johan Cruyff Arena. With former Cohn and Leipzig manager Stefan Baumgart now in charge, Krumen was unfamiliar with his game, specifically the formation, and the clown's knowledge showed. <laughs> This may 
be a big problem next year. But currently, the issue was the present. And that situation was four points behind Feyenoord. Things don't get easier with Arsenal in the Champions League. In the round of 16, Go Ahead Eagles would face Arsenal again. And it began like the previous encounter. Gabriel Jesus opening everything up. The pressure is still on them. And the side reacted well with the most precise of strikes. Mario Dorgel smacked the ball off of Boomgaard's back and it somehow rolled in. Then, just prior to the half, Big Willy Kamala scored off a corner to match last fixture's scoreline. Yet, there was a half to play and Uma Kali would regret this miss. In the 75th minute, Richie found Odegaard for the equalizer. 2-2 was a great score, but Krumen was going for another, but that proved to be naive. With I swear 78 players in the box, the ref missed a clear pen, Arsenal countered, Hayter somehow didn't intercept Nanto's pass, and this random pace merchant scored the winning goal. The Gunners may have won here, but the Adela Schorst were waiting. And the wait was worth it, as Boongard within 25 minutes bagged a brace. That gave the advantage back to go ahead, but Pep was cooking something up at half time. Sit down! Nobody talk! Sit down! Following that, they were ruthless, taking advantage of a Vinicius Souza error. If you thought defeating Arsenal was too good to be true, you were right, as Martinelli would add a brace for himself. Another 3 2 loss means that Arsenal advanced 6 4 on aggregate. A great first campaign, but there's still a chance at a trophy. The semi-final versus Villain's Bay happened after the thumping by Ajax. They were a second division side, and while they were not providing any danger, Go had struggled to find the back of the net. Thankfully, a penalty was won, with Schaland tucking it home. But this was too close for comfort. The final would come against Twente, who defeated PSV and Hirnvin on their way here. Before that, there was a dress rehearsal in the Eredivisie, seeing Go Ahead win 2-1. A few more followed, and with Feyenoord dropping some games, the gap was now at 2. It was going down to the wire, but Krumen had to worry about making history in the Dutch Cup. Go Ahead Eagles have never won this competition, and only made the final all the way back in 1965, losing to an 88th minute goal from Franz Boomeister, handing Feyenoord the trophy. Forte on the other hand, last lifted the trophy in 2011 versus Ajax after extra time. With their short stint as a strong Eredivisie club coming to a close, they wouldn't want to let this era end without a trophy. 51,177 fans at the Kuip witnessed the final, but who would be the victors? It started with Go Ahead, but Boongard hit the post. Bundy were having a slow start, with them struggling to clear this out. Go Ahead had been better, and in the second half, Boongard was sent behind, but Twenty's keeper came out of nowhere, Havik's attempt was blocked, but Boongard? Come on, really? But minutes later, just what we need. Mm, yeah. Just what we need. <laughs> oh, Vinicius, Boongard, lay it off. Yes! Lucas Havlik takes the lead for Go Ahead Eagles. One day really didn't provide much today, as Go Ahead Eagles would go on and win the Ka and Bay Bay Cup for the very first time. It's a shame this wasn't the last game of the season, as the team needed to focus on an Eredivisie title chase. Could Go Ahead build upon their new trophy cabinet? Well, it needed a fine or loss due to their goal difference. That wouldn't occur against Nat Breda or Kroenigan, so PSV was the best chance. Go ahead and match them in their games with Volendam and AZ, but Sparta Rotterdam were making things difficult. It'd be over if they couldn't do it here. However, off the bench, Monsalve did, as he had a cool finish in the 73rd minute, giving Go Ahead a chance. Unfortunately, Feyenoord would defeat PSV with a lone Reinders finish. On the final day versus Heerenveen, they scored twice in the first half and would claim the title with a 3 0 victory. Those draws from earlier really did cost Go Ahead who won their game. Another step was made, but there was still work to do. Finishing second meant that Go Ahead would have to go to the third round qualifying of the Champions League thanks to the coefficient drop. The good news, however, was that 20 million was given to spend, so expect a lot of business next season. However, the real devastating news of today is a finer beat Go Ahead in the U18 playoff final too.